We're going to be talking about interference, which is what happens when two waves meet. I mean, this sounds like the sort of premise for a lame love story or something like that, but that's, that's not the case here. What happens is two waves, or even more, uh, they can actually meet up and interact with each other. And we're going to learn the words interference and also the word superposition of waves. And they're actually sort of two sides of the different uh, situation here. So with interference then, we're going to talk about what happens when two waves interact. This is really what's going on here. Well, or two or more, but we'll just keep it nice and simple here. So when two waves interact, um, there are actually going to be places where they add up. Uh, I guess I'll say that. So there are places. So there are places where, and I can't seem to write today, sorry. There are places where they add up, and we're going to be talking about this whole thing about adding them up here. So places where they add up, um, and in this case we're going to say to give what we call constructive interference. And also place where, uh, so that's going to be where they have a maximum intensity. And there's going to be places where they give destructive interference, we're going to call it. Destructive interference. Now when I say we're places where the waves add up, we're going to be doing that in another video where we actually look at superposition. In other words, where we actually go ahead and add these up. But in this case, I'm just going to show you what happens here. So we have constructive interference or destructive interference. Constructive is where they add up to give you a maximum intensity. Destructive is where they add up to give you a, a minimum intensity. So this is the this is sort of the, the key idea here. Now I know it's a little bit cheap to use uh, a definition within its, you know, a word within its own definition here, but I think it'll become more clear as we go along here. So first of all, there's something that exists called a path difference. And uh, so let's see here, the waves, maybe I'll say this, the waves might bounce off or reflect. So Lots of effects can happen here. So let's just say we're looking at a situation where we have, I don't know, let's say a, a person maybe. So this person, there we go, you're standing there. And there's some sort of, well, we need some sort of source. So maybe this right here is the source right over here. Maybe this right here is the source of the wave. So that could be sound wave or light wave or even in water, I suppose, but then you'd be well, having trouble breathing, but whatever the source of this wave, I mean, maybe maybe we actually put like a wall behind you, perhaps, some sort of solid wall here. So what could happen here? Well, the wave that's actually sort of hitting you here, I mean, this right here is going to sort of have, you know, let's just say we were looking at before at sort of these wave fronts here. So these, you know, this so source of, let's say, sound, these wave fronts might come to the right like this right here, and they might run into you. So maybe there we have this distance. So from there to there, like where you're actually standing, maybe we call that distance D1, let's say, for the first distance. But now, of course, what might happen is this light uh, or sound or whatever it was might have also, I mean, maybe it actually reaches you directly here, so from here to here, but maybe it also goes ahead and bounces off the wall and comes back to you. So maybe, for example, um, it also went sort of off the wall, bounced, you know, sort of came back and then ran into you. So that might seem a little bit complicated here, because what actually happened then in that case is it went basically this distance right here and then plus this distance right here. Okay, so we're going to call that distance, uh, in this case, D2, we can call that that sort of, the distance that it traveled here, so D2. So that would be maybe the total distance that travels so here and here, for example. Okay, so let's say some of the sound went from here to here, 
So that was only D1, that was only that distance. Whereas the sound that reached you after bouncing off the wall traveled all this distance here plus this. So that, you know, it went sort of this way and then that way. If that was the case, then maybe I'll put a little arrow. So it went so sort of that way and then it bounced off and hit you then this way. Whereas this stuff over here basically just went that way, you know, ran into you. So there is a, a difference here. See that the, the, the sound, or in this case, it could be light or water or whatever it was, it, it goes a different distance. So we're going to name that the path difference. That's going to be the key thing here with this. So the path difference. See, there is a difference in how far each of them traveled. And the path difference is going to be, well, just the difference between them. So in this case, d2 minus d1. Um, and that actually tells you lots of good things here. What it can actually tell you is what kind of interference you'll have. So it tells you what kind of interference you will have. Oops. Oh, just got to write properly here. I got to learn how to talk and write at the same time. Apparently I'm having trouble here. So the path difference tells you what kind of interference you will have. And so we have those two main types we talked about before. We have constructive or destructive. So let's see then, using this same idea here of this path difference, let's see then what we have for constructive interference. Well, that is when the path difference, remember, that's what this is. This right here, that's the, that's the path difference. So always using that same last picture, always using this idea here that it travels a different path. So maybe it gets to you this way, and maybe it gets you from bouncing off, whatever the case may be. If you have a path difference here, well then, knowing what that path difference equals, then it'll actually tell us something. So if it's equal to n lambda, okay, this right here, then we're going to have what we call constructive interference. Now you might wonder, what do we mean by, uh, well first of all, lambda. Lambda is the wavelength of the light, or the sound, or whatever it is you're looking at. But still measured in meters. N, now this is important, this is just some positive integer. So some positive integer, it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. We don't count negatives though, it has to be a positive, or 0. So n here can be 0, so if you made it 0, that means if the path difference is equal to 0, well then you have constructive interference. You're going to have a maximum intensity. This is really what this means here. This right here means a maximum intensity. Because these two waves are going to end up sort of interacting with each other. See the waves back here in this picture? This wave here, let's say this blue one, and this red one, they will actually interact with each other. They'll interact with each other to give you a maximum. So that's what we call this constructive interference. That's this one here. So a maximum intensity happens when uh, this is the case. So for example, we could say that d2 minus d1 can equal um, lambda. That's when n was equal to 1. See that? Because if you make this 1, then that works. That works. That gives you a maximum. But what about when it equals 2 lambda or 3 lambda or 4 lambda? Those all work. You can see clearly that n is 2, n is 3, n is 4. These are all different cases that will give you a maximum. We could also say that path difference equals 0. That's also the case. I mean, if the path difference was equal to 0, you could say, well, that's when n was equal to 0. That also works. So this gives you a maximum intensity. We have something called destructive interference. And I guess you can probably figure it out. So we have a minimum intensity. Now this happens at a different sort of situation here. That's when the path difference, remember that's what this means, that's the path difference. So when that equals, now this time it can't be just n lambda, it turns out it has to be half integers. So we're going to say n plus a half times lambda. That's the key thing with this. And again, remember, lambda is the wavelength. That's still the case which is in meters, and we still have that n equals a in, uh, positive integer. So in this case, we're going to say 
0 or 1 or 2 or 3 dot dot dot. So for example, what if d2 minus d1 equals well, 0 0.5 lambda? That's what 1 half is. That's if we made n 0, because 0 plus a half is just 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 times lambda. So that's if we made n equals 0. That gives you a minimum. In fact, we say that gives you the first minimum. But it could also be 1.5 lambda. Now, how did we do that? Well, we make n equal 1. Or it could be 2.5 lambda. That's if we make n equal 2. Or it could be 3.5 lambda. I think you get it, right? This could be anything. So this is how this works here. This is how the path difference works. But I think it might be nice to show you a more visual example of this. So let's actually go ahead and open up a PHET animation. We'll look at water here, and I've got these water droplets hitting fairly fast. And we've seen this sort of thing before. Well, that's just with one thing. So let's do two drips. So now I've got two sources, which means these waves interact. Now it's a bit complicated looking because look at all this crazy stuff that happens. I mean, I could actually use a detector here and actually throw in a detector. Um, and what I do is I have to place my little thing. So let's say right here. You can see that there's sort of dark and light spots. So you can see these sort of things oscillating a lot. But what if I put it, see this little sort of shadowy area? Can you sort of see these areas right here and right here and right here? Those, like there, for example, notice how it doesn't change much? So what's actually happening is here, this is a place of maximum intensity. I mean, this is the place where it changes the most. So this is the first maximum, which tells you this is where there's constructive interference. And this will actually be where n equals 0 in this uh, case over here. So if we go back to constructive interference here, where was it? Constructive interference, n equals 0. That was the first sort of maximum here. Now what happens, maybe I can actually slide this over so it's actually easier to see. So there we go. So for constructive interference, this is where n equals 0. And then do you see how there's another place where there's maximum things happening? It's up here. That's the next one. So that's when n equals 1. So it's up here. It's also symmetric in this case. So it's also down here. There's another place. Now what about the places where there's minimum things going on here? So those are places with destructive interference. So those are going to be places where we have this n plus a half here. So what if I make n zero? Well, that makes it 0.5 lambda. And those places happen not here where there's maximum intensities, but in these little shadowy areas. So look right here. That's where n equals zero, here and here. Um, and then we can say that, well, so that means our path difference is going to be 0.5 lambda in this case. And then, of course, we have another place. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit higher here. That's when n equals 1. So that means our path difference is 1.5 lambda here and here. It may not be so obvious. It's a bit weird. But we can do the same thing with sound. We can add two speakers. And we can do the same thing with the detector and see what happens with the sound. So again, this is a place with constructive interference because the path difference is equal to, well, in this case right here, zero, right? Because if you think about it, the diff distance that they have to travel is the same. But if I make it over here, for example, now I have uh, a place with destructive interference, and that's because the distance from here to here is different than the distance from here to here. In fact, it's such that we have this first destructive interference. So that means n is 0, so that means the path difference must be 0.5 lambda here and here. That's another place with the minimum. And so on. We can do the same thing with light. You might think, why is he bothering to do this? Because the light one, I think we can do something even cooler. So here again, you can see constructive interference, destructive interference here and here. And then we have the next set of constructive interference where it has a maximum and minimums here. And then over here as well, and we have another one of these destructive interference. It's kind of weird, but you can sort of see these little lines going this way and this way. What I think is cool, though, is to show you the screen here. Well, that at least just shows you that you have sort of a maximum intensity here. And here you have a minimum intensity, so it sort of looks, you know, if you projected this light onto a screen here. What I like to show you, though, is the graph. So this actually shows you the intensity. So this is no intensity, and over here this is 1.0 intensity. So that's sort of more intensity here. So if we see it like that, 
And you can see that over here that in this middle here, that's where we have constructive interference clearly. And see how right over here where this sort of shadowy area, look at that, the intensity here is zero. See, the intensity is zero along this line. And over here, for example, it's at a maximum at this position right here. So you can see that these things can happen here. So I think that's maybe a, a more visual way to look at what's going on here with constructive and destructive interference.